So let's look at kickstarting the systemizing of your business. So start thinking about it this time of year, over your Christmas break, when you're in that warm shower, just reflect on what we're covering today and have a think about how these systems are going to support you uh, to enjoy a smooth running business that you can actually step out of whenever you need to. I mean, that is the ultimate goal of systemizing a business. Now, diving straight in, good systems really are the foundation of your business, being able to thrive, grow and scale. So, sadly, I actually speak to many business owners who are feeling one of these or maybe multiple of these. So, they're overloaded and they're feeling burnt out. They're not really taking any breaks or holidays. When I speak to them, you can feel it in the voice, in the tone of their voice. Or if they have taken some time off, the wheels start falling off the business, either after a few days or a week of them trying to step away and take a break. So it really is a sort of a miserable situation. They're, they're burnt out. They're trying to go on leave um, and, and things just, you know, do still continue to fall apart. So if you're if you're connecting with any of this or you've experienced any of this in your business currently, just type it into the chat box so I can check in with you as we go along. Equally, other business owners, they've actually started taking on staff tasks. So I was talking to someone a couple of weeks ago, a couple in a business, and they know they have a lack of systems to support staff in their daily work. And they're now actively looking to do something, but they're literally taking on staff tasks because staff aren't completing them the way they want them done. They're, you know, leaving things behind. Like there's there's a there's a whole mess sitting unfortunately in the way that business is operating and we're looking to have those systems support them so they're no longer doing this also other business owners i'm speaking to one i'm working with you know in his mid-60s for example others are reaching their 60s and they're still the bottleneck in the business and they can only dream of actually selling the business one day for a decent sum of money so you know it's a dream it's more like a pipe dream let, let, let alone getting a really high multiple of a market value in a, in sort of selling a business. So it's it's quite painful to stay there. And other business owners I speak to, they actually feel like they're running an adult daycare centre for their staff. So they're running around supporting this, you know, one particular staff or team member with certain tasks. They've set them up. They're operating really well. Then they move on to the next one and the next one and the next one. And by the time they've done it, they're running around and there's more problems to be solved and everyone still keeps running through them for support in problem solving and getting things done. And this is how they feel. Like they feel like they don't have time to work on the business and think more strategically and actually do the things they want to do in the business. So, if, again, if you've experienced any of it or felt any of it, type which ones it is into the chat box and I'll circle through. So business owners do understand that systems are their way out, you know, when they've clued onto it, you know, when they've log locked into it, they understand it, but they don't know where to start. No. And so nothing much is achieved. So including their goals and the vision for their business, kind of like this image where things are floating around and getting nowhere fast, right? So business owners do begin with the best intentions. I've seen it. Um, they've spoken to me about it. We've worked through it. But then they fail because they either start in the wrong place or they think they need to document everything all at once in their business, right? But that's simply not true. So, yes, you can start in the wrong place um, if, if, you know, in the sense that, you know, you're not getting enough traction for the time and energy you're, you're putting into that part of the business. But when it comes to documenting everything at once, no, that's not true. And I want to sort of crack that myth today and help help you on your way. But definitely knowing the best place to start is the key to success. Um, so the best use of your time is to document the most critical and leveraged business processes. So who am I? Really, really briefly, I started out life as a research scientist, if you didn't know that. So there are buckets of systems we used, you know, way, way back in, in science and, and research, a system for housing, you know, the animals that you know, needed to be used in experimentation, a system for handling your chemicals, system for handling radioactive materials, et cetera, et cetera. 
I loved it until I didn't love it. So then I entered the um, pharmaceutical industry, trained up in sales, and then went on to study my master's of marketing, learned a whole new language of marketing, which was very foreign to me, even coming from sales. Awesome. But then, you know, marketing, marketing has their own systems. It's super cool. Did some contract consulting work for Bright Marketing. Um, Naomi Simpson's Bright Marketing before she started Red Balloon, also worked in South Core Packaging, started my own businesses in natural skincare products um, for children and babies to begin with and then adults. And then use systems, systems to create products, systems to formulate, systems to test. So systems really are everywhere and every part of your business. And then I started Business to Business Buzz, my consultancy in marketing. So I've got over 27 years in sales and marketing and systemology added uh, late last year in 2020. And it's just an extension of my love for how systems support your business in growing. So if systemizing is so good, why aren't more business owners doing it? Why do you think they're not doing it? Usually it's for some of the reasons we've already discussed. It's they've started and it, they got overwhelmed and, and then just dropped it. Uh, they've started, nothing was updated regularly, so it was forgotten and no use was, you know, no, no use came of it, unfortunately. Uh, and they don't really know where to start. That's pretty, pretty common. So how do you avoid feeling overwhelmed by this daunting task of systemizing an entire business? Well, you don't start with an entire business, obviously. You want to chunk it down. And what we love to do is find out what the critical systems are in your business and then start with those. And when we're talking about critical systems, we're talking about systems that help you generate cash flow in the business. What are the core systems when you look at them that help you attract your target market, your clients, help you take on inquiries and, you know, have a sales process, your onboarding and then your, um, uh, your, your delivery of your services and your products and then repeat business. They're the ones you want to start with. You don't want to start with the obscure finance ones or management or, or HR necessarily unless we'll come to some of the activity later, but unless that's a particular bottleneck for you, right? So starting with your critical systems is really, really helpful. And who's the best person to be documenting the systems? I get this question quite a bit. Well, quite often, it's not the actual business owner. It's not you, the business owner. You're usually busy, um, overloaded already. You're more than likely an entrepreneur who has a big vision thinking and, you know, you love the big picture. And in most cases, you know, the details, getting into the details and the nitty gritty and documenting is not particularly exciting for you. And probably one of the reasons why you haven't done much about systemizing the business if you haven't, that's normal. What you want to do is find someone who is more like a systems champion in the business, someone whom on your team, you've identified they do like process. You know, they do like to document things and, and they're pretty good with attention to detail and you want to foster and nurture that person and bring them in to the fold of being a systems champion, an advocate for helping you systemize the business. Or you can hire assistants, other team members, virtual assistants to help you document those processes. Lots of different ways to do it. All right. Really briefly, I wanted to introduce you to Nikki Kibarissis of Kitty's Eye Care, an optometrist of two really busy clinics um, in Geelong and in, so Geelong in outside of Melbourne and one in Melbourne. They specialise in behavioural optometry for kids. It's pretty demanding because they're working with children mostly and their parents and anxious parents. And we're not talking about just normal glassware and eyewear necessarily all the time. So, she was finding that her staff were always relying on her as the first contact for information and basics. Um, and because her time is really precious and she has very little extra spare time, she wanted to shift their habits of her staff constantly bothering her for those little things and have them operate from systems. So it was pretty painful. They did have a collection of outdated systems they'd started to document. They were not complete and it wasn't really working. So what was happening was, um, you know, in the ordering process of lenses and glasses and things like that, it's pretty 
uh, pretty intense having a look having looked at her back end systems of what her staff actually have to do but there's a lot of attention to detail that's required when they're placing orders for kids um, glasses and, and their prescriptions and so forth so when little mistakes were made on the back end or the front desk in in communication it was causing a huge mistake right across the back end of the business and every employee after that was chasing trying to fix these problems and mistakes that were made and then it wasn't making sense with the suppliers and it was costing her a lot of money so you know if they made mistakes it was costing time and employee time to to rectify them or mistakes were made and the business had to wear it if they undercharged for glasses or lenses and things like that all right so what we did is we got all her team on the same page with 22 critical systems documented so that all her 16 team members at Kitty's Eye Care are operating off the same page. She felt like she had Chinese whispers going. So a loss of accuracy when passing on knowledge to different staff members and that was gone. So she's got peace of mind and confidence and, and you know, working through her clinics at a new level and hiring differently as well. So that's what systems and starting to systemize your business can actually do deliver de deliver great results and get a, get rid of some of those pains so ready you ready we've got a lot to cover let's dive in bottleneck and burnout some of the common problems let's have a look and see where we can get to how we get to scalable saleable and soaring all right so Let's look at kickstart systemizing your business. I'm going to cover the four phases of business systemization and how to progress to having a really smooth running business that you can step out of when you need a break. We're going to start that. Um, we're going to look at tools and software, the concept of tools and software and not your systems and how that distinction is quite important. And we're going to pinpoint the best place to get started systemizing your business today so you're no longer overwhelmed and you've got a simple and productive starting point. Is that good? I just want to see some yeses before I go on. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. Have we got some yeses? You're ready? Okay. Yep. Awesome. Fantastic. Let's go back in. So coming back in. Oh, hang on. I've stopped sharing, haven't I? Here we go. The, the <laughs> Let's just double check that I'm sharing and we're back in. All good. Here we go. Slides, thank you. Up we come. Fantastic. So, four phases of business systemization are survival, stationary, scalable, and saleable. So, in the beginning, all businesses start this way. If you look at this as a bit of a continuum and a normal distribution curve, where most businesses typically fall in and sit around the middle. But in the beginning, when you're starting out, every business starts out with no systems because you're you're finding, you're fine tuning your processes and your deliverables and, and your product and service and the market fit, right? But what happens is as you're working things out, you know, cash flow is inconsistent, client flow is inconsistent. And quite often, if there is a team, the team members kind of just make things up as they go along. And the business owner hasn't even yet realised that they are the bottleneck in the business, and that they need to, ex, you know, extract themselves from the business and start to create some documented systems. So once they've realised they're a bottleneck and that te the team is making things up as they go along and that their way out is with systems, then we're getting into the stationary phase. So the stationary phase is great. Your team members are starting to, you know, sort of maybe document. You might have some documented systems here and there, a bit of a, a you know, a, a folder and, and some videos here and some documents there, but it's not quite cohesive and you haven't actually extracted all the knowledge um, from your core team members or the business owner yourself, right, or, your, or the partners in the business. So what happens here is if you lose one of those um, uh, business partners or a key team member, then you've got key team member or core team member dependency and that knowledge goes out and you have to start again, right? So the first important thing you want to do is extract that knowledge, extract your systems that they're operating from within your business to get to the next stage and to give you some stability and security. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So the next phase is scalable. Scalable 
is things are coming together. You've actually documented, you're extracted and you've documented a lot of your core processes that we talk, core processes that we talked about earlier. And your team are now starting to, you know, get the notion that we've got systems we need to follow. They might need reminding, you know, to follow them because ha it hasn't quite become a culture yet, but they're, they're bought into the idea that, okay, we're, we're on this track of this is how we start to do things. These are our systems. And now the best thing you can do is actually start to organize your system. So you might have a lot of tools and software that are either incompatible, not optimized, not operating optimally and, and so forth. And even your systems aren't. Starting to organize them is, is the key to moving forward. And then we move to the saleable stage. So saleable is what we call in systemology the 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 stage at which your businesses reach when it becomes enticing um, for someone else viewing it to want to buy it doesn't mean you have to sell it or you're preparing it to sell necessarily but what it means is you've built a true business asset a true asset in your business because your your business is operating on these systems that are independent interdependent and you have actually stepped out of it you can work in it and on it as much as you like or as little as you like, you've achieved complete business reliability. It's operating like a Swiss clock watch. So now you can do two things, two important things is reach towards optimizing all of those systems and the way your business operates. And that's a reiterative process over time, obviously. The other really important thing to is sailing through the saleable stage. Haha, <laughs> that's a pun. Sorry about that. Get, getting through the saleable stage or to it is you want complete buy-in from your team. So your team at this point is now saying, hey, we're not told or reminded that we have to follow systems and processes. This is just how we do things. So you're recruiting new team members. You've got staff members on annual leave and, and others covering their tracks and they just know this is how we do things here. This is how we do things in this business. When they've achieved that mentality and that buy-in, that is when you have a truly systemized business. And all of the departments, not just your critical systems, but all of the other departments, management, leadership, HR, recruitment, consulting, all of that has been systemized. Make sense? Cool. All right. So I said to you, tools and software are not systems. So I want you to think about a systemized business, the way you can actually shift things and, and create a fully systemized business. We're going to liken it to an iceberg. So with an iceberg, the top bit you see at the top is like the 10% of the iceberg, right? So you see that, but it's not, it's not the whole thing. What's under it is, is, you know, what moves it. Well, you can move it from underneath, but not the top. Tools and software sit at the top. They're awesome. They're really important. They're really helpful. But it sort of takes you 10% of the way to systemizing your business. It's not the whole thing. So don't let that hoodwink you into thinking that I've bought this piece of software or I've got this tool. All of a sudden, I've magically systemized my business. Mm -mm. Let's just don't, don't think that, all right, because it's not. <laughs> What happens is two, two quick distinctions before we move to the bottom of the iceberg. One is project management. I just want to let you know that project management software sits on its own accord. Don't try to let it be everything unless it literally can do everything and most can't. So project management software is great for who does what by when. Who on your team is responsible? What are they doing? What's the system process they're following and the project that needs to be done? And when is, does it need to be done by? That's what project management software is awesome at, right? But it's not where your systems are housed. I think I only know of one that's capable of doing both. And it's a, a very industry specific software. So systems is how we do things, how you do things in your business. I've given you an example. System Hub is the one we use because it's been deliberately developed for housing systems. So you just want to have a place where your systems sit and they're housed and your staff can access them. Your whole team can access the systems they need to and they can be easily and regularly updated. So just those two distinctions. All right, so part of building out this iceberg of a systemized business is certainty is a core component performance and buy-in. Certainty is all about your systems. The, the core systems 
deliver certainty in your client flow, your cash flow, how, how the system supports your team and how the business actually performs. That's what you, that's what will generate a systemized business. The other component is performance, the performance of the systems and when they're optimized and the performance of your team delivering those systems, working, working the systems. So your team's KPIs, you know, the performance reviews and things like that that you need to do when something is operationally, op, op, you know, working in your business. And the other component is when you get all three of these, when you get the buy-in, like I mentioned earlier, when you get the mindset of your whole team saying, oh, yeah, okay, this is the way we do things here. This is how we do things. I'm in, yep, I'll follow the system. I'll train someone else up on the system. Then, and only then, have you got all the foundational principles that will help you achieve what we call complete business reliability. So if you haven't had a chance to feel like you're systemized in any way yet, it's probably because one of those things is missing, right? You've probably got tools and software. You've probably got some systems documented. You might have some great KPIs and, and things like that for your team or yourself happening, but you may not have the full buy-in or the whole of whole of the, you know, business hasn't been fully documented. So complete business reliability, that excites me and it excites a lot of business owners, right? Because that is what gives you the relief. That is what gives you the way to step out of your business and, and work on it strategically or step out of it and have someone else operate it and manage it and you work on a new project, you know, like so much opens up when businesses get to this stage. All right, so I said let's pinpoint the best place to get started. So the best place to get started is looking at how does your business make money? Like I mentioned earlier, it's how does your business actually generate income? What services you know, do you offer? What products do you offer that captures the interest of your client or customer? So think about this right now and start, if you've got, if you've printed a worksheet out, awesome, use that. If you're thinking about this for the first time, just take some notes. Where in your business um, do your, does your typical perfect client enter? Meaning what's their first exposure? What's the first product or introductory service they would typically come into you for not your big one you know your big offer or whatever at the back what's the first point of entry that set of systems is the one the set you want to focus on right so if you've got multiple different clients and customers and target markets multiple services and products which virtually every business does where's the very entry point and the most lucrative profitable uh target market and client that's where I want you to start, all right? Okay, so these are the critical stages in client acquisition and servicing your clients and these are the areas you want to focus on. We're going to go through them and you're going to write down a couple of systems that are pertinent to your business where you know you can say, right, that's a really good starting point for me. So marketing, inquiry and sales, client and customer onboarding, product or service delivery, and repeat business. Think of these critical systems that you're going to start documenting and extracting from your team and yourself in, you know, in these distinct categories. All right, so let's go in. Marketing. So for marketing, you might be doing regular Facebook posts or you might be contributing content to send to an agency or outsourced um, content marketing for you that they're putting the posts up for you, but you're doing some back-end work. So when you're looking at all these um, categories and potential activities and work and systems, if you've these are systems that are occurring on a regular basis, okay? If you if you're doing something more than once or a few times and has to be done repeatedly, then it's a system. If it's done once and never touched again, maybe you've built a website but you're not touching it for the next two, three, five years, then there's nothing to list here as a website activity, all right? So just that distinction. This is These systems are based on what you're doing on a regular basis um, that can be systemized, part, systemized, form part of a system, the systemized part of your business. All right, so it could be Facebook posts, could be blog articles, it could be um, uh, ads, you know, ads on um, Google or Facebook or it could be um, 
you know, SEO, that you're providing, you know, those particular blog articles to an SEO manager who is going to, um, you know, sort of do their work, their SEO magic on the back end. But you've got a system for creating content for those blog articles and you want to transfer that knowledge to another team member to take that off your back, for example. All right. Inquiry and sales. Inquiry and sales it's pretty standard across most businesses. So you're looking at a phone call, replying to emails, product demos, service samples. What is it for your business? So just sit down and write, like at the moment now, write one or two systems that fall under each of these categories that are pertinent to your business or relevant to your business. Client and customer onboarding. So client and customer onboarding, it could be you need to email a form to a client and collect their information to start something. You might need to book a site inspection. You might need to book an appointment with them. How do you onboard your clients and customers? And my question is, if there's a gap here, which quite often there is in some businesses, that's okay. That's telling you you probably don't have any proper onboarding systems and that might actually open up some understanding as to why you might be getting, you know, upset clients and customers saying, when is this going to be delivered? When am I expecting this? <clears throat> How's the project running? It's because you haven't set expectations in a client onboarding process. So just think about, you know, how that looks for you. And then we've got product and service delivery. This is the bulk of where your systems are going to be. You have a lot of systems here because this is how you deliver your product or service, what goes on behind the scenes. If it's an accounting business, preparing ASIC documents. If it's an optometrist, it's examining a patient. If it's a designer of any type, creating draft design. So what is it for you? What two essential systems sit in your product and service delivery? Just giving yourself, giving yourself a head start right now. And then repeat business. So what is it in your business that you're doing for repeat business? Are you asking for referrals on a regular basis and do you have a little system for it or is it not systemized? So don't put it down if it's not systemized. Just say there's a gap there and I'll fill it in some other time. Um, but if you have got a system such as, um, you know, up, upselling clients to, you know, the next level of services or next set of products, then put that in. So these are your collection of systems, right? One or two for each. Um, and you'll have the workbook, you can go back over this. Um, and then know that these could be your really good starting points, okay? So which area do you feel would be the most important for you to start with? And it's because you're either too busy there, you're overwhelmed and overloaded, um, there are mistakes happening there, it's a crucial part to generating income for the business, like out of the ones you've just listed now in those categories, which one do you think is the most important? And that's where you can actually get started. And you can do that this side of Christmas, over Christmas, early January, make a start. Okay, so these are the, the things. You can take a screenshot, maybe take a screenshot of that if you like, probably quickest and easiest, and keep that on board. All right, and any questions, we'll, we'll address them at the end. I don't know how we're going running out of time, but all good. Anyway, so when is it a good time to actually systemize your business? Well, if you look at now and say 12 months, two years, whatever, three years down the track, if you're at the bottleneck and burnt out stage and you stay in survival mode, you're over time, it, it just get it, it, things go down. They don't, they don't stay where they are. They actually go down. It gets harder in terms of systemizing a business. If you're at stationary mode, yeah, you're kind of going to keep cruising along, but you're not getting out of it. But if you do want to achieve complete business reliability, here's where I'm going to shift things. You actually want to have a look at um, doing something as soon as you are able to. No pressure, of course. Hello, apps and content. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> I love it when things want to restart themselves. Right. So what I'm trying to show you here while this is loading up, uh, you can see my screen. So you should be able to see this. Yeah. You've been disconnected. Oh, I've been disconnected from my own project. Well, there you go, EOB. It's, it's not just the EME platform today. It's everything deciding to throw us off. Let's have a look and see. Otherwise, I'll just talk you through it. 
Um, here we go. Here we go. So just let's do this visually. You know, let's understand what this looks like um, over over time. So if we're starting out today, so we should be able to start out here, right? And if we're starting out here, but you want to be on this journey of complete business reliability, that you can agree that there are little things you need to do and need to start doing in order to get there, right? So one is, you know, start to realise you're the bottleneck, start to figure out which systems are the most important, start to extract them, start to document them, you know, and so on and so on, right? There's, there's a process. But the longer you stay in survival down the bottom, or in stationary across the top. And the further your business grows, the bigger the gap to get there, the harder you have to work, right, to get there. So that's the problem. And that's what I wanted to highlight to you, that as the business grows, the more complex it becomes. And I swear, it does become harder. So the sooner you can get onto it once you've realised it, the sooner you'll be able to reap the benefits. Hey, Nomiki, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, we can't see it. If you're trying to oh. show us something, I'm you only seeing see a black screen? screen. Yes. Oh, hang on. Let's try that. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. So let's try again. I'll share my screen. Because I've shared entire screen, not just Windows. So thank you so much for letting me know. All right. Let's try that. Can you see this? Is that better? Yeah, we can see it now. Thank you. Fantastic. So, yeah, the journey is across the top. You know, these are the little steps you want to take so that you can start implementing systems and getting complete business reliability. But as I said, the bigger the, bigger the business gets over time, the longer you leave it, the harder it is, the, 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 the bigger the task you have. You know, it's just a bigger job to try and get yourself to assist a fully systemized business. All right, so I'm bringing my slides up. Can everyone see those now? Is that okay? Yes, we can see Thank them. You. Uh, Fantastic. We, we need to wrap up soon as well. Just yeah, a quick wrapping one. Wrapping up right now. That's it. So systemizing your business is important and systemology is an awesome way to do it. We've done it with quite a few business owners and the results are phenomenal. Absolutely love it. So there is a system for creating systems that will help you get started. It's just, you know, it's a system for showing you how to start going about creating systems in your business and you can grab that. You can go to systemizemybusiness.com forward slash system and grab the system for creating systems to help guide you in your very first steps. And if this is speaking to you and you want a conversation, you want a bit of an audit as to how, um, you know, how your systems are doing, then go to systemizemybusiness.com forward slash start and we can have a conversation and I can point you in the right direction about your systems.